We always taught our boys, you, if you want something, you got to work for it. You know, it's not given to you. My sons weren't drug addicts. They weren't the type that stole from people that are on the corner or begging or whatever, doing what they have to do to get their next fee. They were functional addicts, which they kept jobs. They had cars. They totaled them, but they had cars, and they paid their bills. Eric was my everything before I had Asa, so Eric got with the wrong people, and I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to be a man, whatever, and he didn't want to follow the rules anymore. Didn't think he had to do chores and that. And uh, so we kicked him out. We did the tough love. I think I was working afternoons and my husband, we were sleeping and we just heard a pounding at the door. It's a police officer. They asked if we were the parents of Eric Kirk and I, and we said, yes. I go, why, what's wrong? And they said, well, there's been an, an accident. He's in the hospital. So we uh, got Asa and rushed to the hospital, Oakwood, and the doctors, they came up to me and my husband said, they don't know what's wrong. We can't figure out. I go, did you do a drug test on him? He does drugs. We knew that uh, he wasn't coming back. Asa and I, we were too much alike. We always butted heads. But he always made sure he said, I love you. He, he started by uh, snorting. He snorted heroin for a while. That's how he started shooting it was because the kid told him the high, you get a quicker high and a quicker rush and everything. And so Asa tried it and that's how he's been, that's how he shot. And when he told me, it, a piece of me broke because I looked at him and I said, you know, that's how your brother died. And he says, yeah. I says, well, why, you know, why? He goes, no, I'm careful, I'm careful, and I go, you can be careful and all, all you can, but there's still that one chance. I always told him, I says, people know when you're high, dude. No, 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 I says, yeah, because even though you're outgoing in that, you know, all they have to do is look at you. It's just, it's always going to be around, no matter what, it is always going to be around. And they should just have a safe spot, some place where if they're going to OD, they'll get the help real quick. And that was my thing with Asa, that's why I brought him home, because if he's going to OD, he's going to do it at the house where we can help him. He, we would park by this park, he would cop at this park. So we'll just be parking at the side and that and wait, and he would go in, in the park and meet his dealer. He was my son, and I took him any way that I could get him. That's, you know, I mean, he was my son. I couldn't throw him out. I did the tough love, and I lost my, I lost my firstborn doing the tough love. I wasn't about to lose my baby. You know, I could have just thrown him out, but then, I didn't want to get that call at 1 o'clock in the morning again. I didn't want to not hear from them and have to make a police missing person report and they find them in the alley or in one of the bandos. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't live with myself. Asa! Hey, can you pick up the ketchup? I'm going for the yellow. Quit filming me. Stay half right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm telling me again, dude? 
without uh, you know anybody being around and it just I didn't you know want him to OD out on the street 